Hey everyone, Ben Jensen here. Something that a number of fellow musicians, students and full-time professionals alike have discussed with me over the years is the similarity between John Coltrane's iconic giant steps and the bridge of a certain standard tune. The bridge of the standard tune in question sounds a little bit like this. In case you're unfamiliar with the similarities that I'm speaking of, you may still be able to hear some similar intervallic movement between the chords that I just played and the chords that you hear in Giant Steps. But what you just heard was the bridge to a very famous standard tune called Have You Met Miss Jones by Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart. And on the surface level, you might be asking, what on earth do these two pieces of music have to do with each other? Well, to begin, Have You Met Miss Jones existed for some years before Giant Steps came along. So today we're going to analyze both pieces of music and work it out. Is it possible that John Coltrane was influenced by this very famous standard tune? And make sure to jump in the comments and let me know what you think. Have you learned to play either of these pieces of music? What similarities or differences have you noticed? Drop a comment and let me know. If you've been enjoying the videos right here on my channel, make sure to give this video a like so that we can push it out to as many people as possible. And consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming playing videos, lesson videos, and discussions about music. And if you'd like to take your playing to the next level, make sure to join me at bensguitarclub.com where you can pick up my mini lessons, masterclasses, and bundle packages, including the BGC bundle which features all of my mini lessons and masterclasses in one package. Let's start off with a bit of analysis. In case you're unfamiliar with the chord changes in Giant Steps or the chord changes in Have You Met Miss Jones, we're going to take a look at the similarities between both chord progressions. Giant Steps first appeared in 1959 or 1960, depending on which recording you're referring to and the composition itself features a 16 bar form. If you've watched my full Giant Steps lesson right here on my channel, which you can check out up here, you'll know that the harmonic basis of the composition is explained in the first three bars. It sounds a bit like this. We start off in B major, then a 5-1 cadence to G major, then a 5-1 cadence to E flat major. And then we can resolve back to B major. What you just heard is essentially three tonal centers moving in a pattern of descending major thirds, a little bit like this. B major down to G major, and then down to E flat major. Now let's compare giant steps with Have You Met Miss Jones, which first appeared in 1937 and is based on an AABA form. All three of the A sections in the form are eight bars in length and are based on a 1625 progression in F major, a little bit like this. Now, as you can probably hear, the A sections primarily utilizing that chord progression aren't going to bear any resemblance to Giant Steps at all, really. More than anything else, they arguably resemble I've Got Rhythm by Gershwin, which actually predated Have You Met Miss Jones by seven years. But where it does begin to resemble Giant Steps is in the bridge, which is eight bars in length and sounds a little bit like this. We start with B flat major seven, and then we have a two, five, one progression into G flat major. And then after that, we have a 2-5-1 progression into D major. And then we return to the 2-5-1 progression into G flat major. Then it resolves back to F major with a 2-5-1 into F major. The 
basis of what you just heard is also a pattern of tonal centers moving in descending major thirds. In this case, B flat major, down to G flat major, down to D major. So it ends up being the exact same concept as giant steps, just highlighting a different set of tonal centers. Giant steps highlights B major, G major, and E flat major, where the bridge of Have You Met Miss Jones highlights B flat major, G flat major, and D major. Both examples move in descending major thirds. While the execution may be a little bit different between both pieces of music, the concept is exactly the same. And here's some soloing for you over the bridge of Have You Met Miss Jones, so you can hear it a little more clearly. So the big question that we should clarify is this. Did John Coltrane take giant steps from Have You Met Miss Jones? Well, the answer is probably no, but let's look at the history. Have You Met Miss Jones was first published in 1937. By comparison, giant steps first appeared over 20 years later in 1959 or 1960, as we mentioned earlier, depending upon which recording you're looking at. So it is certainly possible that Coltrane was intrigued by this piece of music, much like Red Norvo, George Shearing, Stan Getz, and Art Tatum, who all recorded versions of Have You Met Miss Jones before Giant Steps first appeared in the late 1950s. Some have also asserted over the years that Coltrane may have been influenced by Nicholas Slonimsky's famous Thesaurus, and some have also asserted that Coltrane may have been influenced by the first movement of Harold Shapiro's String Quartet from 1941. Finally, a number of my friends and colleagues from the Philadelphia music scene have spoken very highly of the great educator and guitarist Dennis Sandoli, and how Coltrane's time studying with Dennis Sandoli may have had an impact on how Giant Steps eventually took shape. Now, it's certainly possible that some or all of these influences had an impact on Coltrane and his compositional process, but it's more interesting to me how someone can take disparate influences and make it part of their own unified compositional or improvisational style. And ultimately, I think it's more than fair to say that Coltrane's compositional process and his improvisational style have been hugely influential and unique in modern creative music. It is, of course, difficult to say whether or not Coltrane was influenced by Have You Met Miss Jones or any number of other factors, but what I can tell you is that Giant Steps occupies an incredibly influential and unique place in creative music itself. And between both of these pieces of music, if anything, you'll learn an incredibly innovative approach to major third tonal centers while you're improvising. But that's enough of what I think. What do you think about these two pieces of music? Have you learned both of them, or maybe just one of them? What similarities or differences do you hear? Drop a comment and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like so that we can push it out to as many people as possible. And consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming playing videos, lesson videos, or discussions about music. And finally, make sure to join me at bensguitarclub.com. I'll see you next time.